In this video, we're going to spend some time looking at a beautiful painting and learning to ask questions that will help us think scientifically. So this piece is called Green River Cliffs, Wyoming, and it's painted by Thomas Moran in 1881. So that's interesting. We might come back to that location and time period and see if that's significant for us, but we're going to skip that for now. And I think the first thing to strike me and perhaps the first thing to strike you is probably not what we're going to focus on, which are those beautiful cliffs off to our right. My question today for you is this. What do you think this is? I think given its size and location, I think we can agree that it's either the sun or the moon. So let's consider for a minute that this could be the sun. We see the beautiful colors in the sky and obviously its location in the sky and those colors remind us maybe of sunrise or sunset, and that makes sense. But think about if that is the sun and we're looking toward it, what would be lit up, sort of what would be in shadow and what would be in sunlight? And then if we study the painting, we can see it doesn't really match up. That the faces of these cliffs, as we're looking at them, are in bright sunlight. We're kind of in shadow, more in the foreground, and that could be that there's something behind us, perhaps another cliff or something that's shadowing the sun. But I think from this perspective, it seems like the sun is over our shoulder, perhaps over our left shoulder or behind us, lighting up our foreground in front of us or our middle ground. I think with that in mind, I think we can agree that this probably isn't the sun. So let's consider that it could be the moon and think about its location. So can the moon be up during the day? And yes, it can. In fact, you may or may not know this, but the moon spends half of its time in our daytime sky and half of its time in our nighttime sky. And it just depends on the phase that it's in as to what portion it's up at day and what portion it's up in the night. Looking at it, it certainly looks like a full moon. So could it be a full moon? And think about when a full moon rises and when a full moon sets. Do you know when that is? A lot of people typically notice a full moon when it's rising, and it tends to rise, it does rise right at sunset. So as the sun is just sort of setting, the full moon is rising. And so the full moon is the only phase, and it's really full for only about 24 hours, so only about one of our days. The full moon phase, we only see that at, at nighttime. So the full moon is never up during the day. So we have to be able, we have to rule out that this could be a full moon because full moons aren't up during the day. So if it can't be a full moon, could it be a gibbous moon? And a gibbous moon is a moon that looks almost full with just a little bit missing. Is it in the right place in the sky to be a gibbous? Well, since it's just above the horizon, we can conclude that it is either what? It's either just risen or it's just about to set. If we knew which direction we were looking, we could answer that question, right? Since the moon, as well as the sun and all the planets, they all rise in the east and set in the west if, because of the geometry of how the planets are arranged and the sun and earth and how the earth spins or rotates. Okay, enough of that. So how could we figure out what direction we're looking? So back to the, what we, where we came in when we said the name of the uh, painting as the Green River Cliffs, um, in Wyoming, we have a location. So if we could go there or know somebody who was familiar with this area and knew these particular structures, we could pretty much determine which way we're looking because those structures are pretty distinctive. So let's say we determine that we're looking east. If that's the case, then we know that this is a waxing gibbous moon. That means the moon will be full in a day or two. Because a waxing gibbous moon rises just before sunset, and so if the sun is behind us, as we think it is, and that means the sun's in the west, that means we're looking east. 
Or let's say we determine we're looking west, and then we could conclude that this is a waning gibbous, which sets just after sunrise, because a waning gibbous is a few days after um, a full moon, and it sets just after the sun comes up. So if the sun is behind us and it's just risen in the east, that means that in this case we're looking west, and this is a waning gibbous. So if we know the area and we know the direction we're looking, or because of that we know the direction we're looking, then we can deduce which moon phase as well as the time of day. Of course, and we didn't go into this, and you certainly could, this all relies on the fact that this is a faithful representation of what the artist actually saw on a particular day, and not simply a fabrication or some kind of compilation of different days that the artist has put together, which is certainly another valid conclusion of what's going on, so you can't rule that out. In our classroom, we have art like this on the walls, and sometimes we have a discussion about them, like the one we've had here, but primarily they just serve as a sort of a beautiful reminder of how things are connected and how studying one area of interest can often inform another. If you're interested in adding these types of studies to your classroom, I'll leave a link in the description below to a couple of resources that will help you do that. And if studying moon phases intrigues you, I'll leave a link to those as well. Thanks for joining me on this discussion as we delve into what it means to think scientifically. Check out the website engagingsciencelabs.com to find out more about curriculum and courses that might be appropriate for your middle school science classroom.